Good morning, everyone. The program I'm about to describe to you and uh, about which this uh, session is dedicated is one of the rare examples uh, you'll find in our science of serendipity. And uh, I'll explain more about how the serendipity played a role in the development of the Hurricane Aerosol and Microphysics Program. Our focus is uh, in producing scientific results that will lead to improved forecasting of both hurricane track, but especially improved forecasting on hurricane intensity changes. We are also evaluating the various hurricane mitigation hypotheses uh, as a secondary objective, and it was the secondary objective, in fact, that led to the formation of HAMP. The program employs cutting-edge modeling and observations, and I'll, I'll give you a, a brief survey of that, and there will be much more detail about that uh, during the rest of the session. So HAMP is, uh, is focused on identifying and testing some hurricane mitigation hypotheses. And how many times have we been to workshops, uh, especially uh, as I recall my 42-year career and all, how many times have we been to workshops when the sole output was a report and not much else? Well, remarkably, and this is where the serendipity comes in, uh, we were asked at the uh, Global Systems Division in Boulder uh, to organize a workshop on uh, hurricane mitigation uh, work that uh, might have been done by a uh, undersecretary of science and technology in the Department of uh, Homeland Security. And this workshop was held in Boulder, was sponsored by DHS. It was hosted in Boulder by ESRO uh, just a little over two years ago. Out of that, out of that has sprung the uh, Hurricane Aerosols and Microphysics Program. These are the participants. And all of these individuals are present with us today, and several of them will be getting papers in the remainder of this session. These are the key scientific objectives that we have in hand. We want to quantitatively test the most promising mitigation hypotheses by the use of rigorous uh, numerical simulations supported by uh, necessary observations of tropical cyclones. We also want to coordinate this, this particular program and uh, use data from the NOAA VHS Supported Wisdom Project and the Unmanned Aerospace Vehicles Project, Unmanned Aerospace Systems Project that NOAA is currently running with NASA and other agencies. We are particularly keen about getting uh, observations that we need for the HAP project with, uh, with the NOAA P3s. And I'll say more, a little more about that as we go on. One of the things that, that the group feels very strongly and we think will demonstrate in this session is that not only are aerosols a vital component of atmospheric processes, and they, they play roles in larger scale processes, but they also affect cloud microphysics and dynamics, and that aerosols affect the cloud microphysics and dynamics in a very fundamental way, a very important way, uh, that we feel has been neglected uh, in tropical cyclones. The aerosols can increase the updraft velocities. They can change drop size distributions. They can transform some ordinary tropical clouds into thunderstorms. And we feel that they affect the intensity changes and, and perhaps even the tracks of hurricanes. So this, this project is focused on uh, looking at the cloud microphysical, cloud microphysical processes explicitly. So these are the various hypotheses that we're looking at. And I want to emphasize that it's, it's really uh, this first one that we've been looking at in the short history of HEMP. I should, should tell you that the HEMP project uh, was initially funded about 15 months ago, but we really didn't get the funding started until just barely a year ago. So the initial work you're going to hear about today is primarily looking at the role of very small submicron sized aerosols in tropical clouds and tropical cyclones. The other hypotheses that we've listed here uh, were, were uh, summarized at the workshop two years ago, and these might be addressed by our modeling and observational work if we go on to phase two in the HAMP project. And incidentally, I'll just say to give you a sort of a, a teaser here that some of you may remember Bill Graves' hypothesis about carbon black. 
it turns out that some of our modeling results in hemp are, are quite surprising in that regard, and that under certain circumstances, carbon black may actually increase hurricane intensity. And I'll let Professor Rosenfeld tell you more about that. The last one is, uh, again, looking at relatively uh, large-scale changes uh, that might be uh, done in advance of hurricanes. Both very expensive and very difficult, but we, the only one that we're really looking at is the focus initially on the first one. So this has a long history. If you go back to Gunn and Phillips over half a century ago, uh, they published some work that looked at the possible impacts of air pollution on the initiation of rain. So that this idea of looking at small CC and aerosols, we've suspected for years that, uh, you know, that they have an impact on, uh, on small cloud systems or individual clouds. This is some work that uh, Rosenfeld published just a couple of years ago. And uh, this is a, this explains, uh, an apparent dichotomy in the role of aerosols. In some cases, uh, there's a chain of events in which aerosols can lead to floods. There are other, other situations in which they could actually decrease precipitation. And as uh, Professor Rosenfeld can tell you in more detail later, a lot has to do with, uh, uh, his student, Nicole Cleaver, uh, a lot has to do with the, uh, whether the cloud bases are warm or cold and the size distribution of the aerosols that affect those clouds. This is an example of a simulation that was done uh, three years ago by Danny and his uh, collaborators. Shows the role of these small aerosols in enhancing uh, cloud drop evaporation in the lowest three kilometers of a simulated uh, tropical storm in here. So we believe that it's necessary to uh, to justify these hypotheses, these are the things that we need to do. Uh, and several of our investigators will be reporting on this work in this session. We need to develop a microphysical scheme that's suitable for quantitative evaluation of the effects of these small aerosols on the cloud microphysics and dynamics. Uh, we need to implement the microphysical, uh, uh, the microphysical schemes into models of both individual clouds and we also have performed simulation of the evolution of individual maritime deep cumulus clouds under widely different aerosol conditions. And then finally, some of the papers this morning will be talking about the implementation of uh, explicit microphysical schemes into advanced tropical cyclone models, and then simulating the evolution of those, those tropical cyclones under different, different aerosol conditions. Now, what's remarkable is that even before HAMP started, and this is how, to give you a sense of the history, this is how we decided that we, this is the sort of the hypothesis that we wanted to focus on, is there was some work done independently by different members of the HAMP team, first Bill Cotton and his student, in simulating Hurricane Katrina with different uh, CCM concentrations, uh, i.e. pollution effects, possible pollution effects in Katrina. And so these, this shows the evolution under these different uh, conditions of clean, polluted, or double concentrations of pollution aerosols of both the uh, maximum wind speeds on the right, minimum pressure on the left. And you see as you go for in, from increasing concentrations of pollution aerosols that the, uh, the pressure rises, the minimum pressure rises considerably. And uh, Professor Rosenfeld and, and Alex King did a, uh, also did an independent simulation with the then microphysics model on, on a Katrina type storm. And they found similar results that uh, from maritime to maritime continental, uh, this being the most uh, concentrated aerosol injections, that the minimum pressure uh, came up quite a bit. So both of these independent results uh, suggested that aerosols could play a very important role in, uh, in, in both the weakening, as will be reported today. This shows you some of the results. So this is, uh, maritime, this is the less polluted going to more polluted, more, more continental aerosols. And that amounts to 16 millibars. Over the, over the first year of the program, this summarizes for you the results that you'll see today. 
small aerosols can often play an important role in modulating hurricane intensity changes. And uh, some of these new modeling approaches that include explicit microphysics uh, show significant promise in being able to predict these aerosol impacts. Another new result, which is uh, was kind of surprising to me, I had a student that uh, used, with Ron Holly's help, some of the new uh, long-range lightning data. And uh, Professor Rosenfeld also has a student, and uh, I'm sorry, Professor Kane has a student that's looked at uh, lightning as well. In fact, uh, Alex has published results in this. But uh, turns out that lightning may be a surrogate indication of the impact of these aerosols and uh, may also serve as a, as a way of, of predicting uh, subsequent uh, hurricane intensity changes. And then finally, there is some, there is some new data that uh, Danny and Bill Woodley acquired in India just this past summer in tropical clouds on the microphysics there that uh, are being used in comparing with some of these model outputs. And we hope, that we hope in the near future, this summer, uh, hopefully, or next summer, to uh, put some new instrumentation that this project has paid for on one of the NOAA P3s to get data on real Atlantic uh, tropical cyclones. Uh, this is to test if you're awake and not much else. This is sort of a flow diagram, and I'm not going to get into the details, but this gives an idea of uh, our strategy in HAMP. And I, what I want to emphasize is that all of this, just this first year of the project, it's really the only upper, just these upper tiers, these upper two tiers uh, that we've uh, accomplished thus far. And uh, we are looking at the impacts of both uh, air ocean coupling and sea spray. That's uh, Isaac Guinness and, and Alex King's work. And uh, the rest of this would come later on, uh, depending upon funding and uh, what our uh, review panel uh, suggests. These are the future plans. And as I said, they depend very much on what our panel uh, recommends. Uh, we may test some additional hypotheses that uh, affect tropical cyclone intensity changes, such as carbon black, ocean cooling, and so on. And then, uh, as I've already mentioned, we hope to acquire uh, real data on the aerosol, CCN, and microphysical uh, measurements with the P3s in uh, the near future on Atlantic storms. And that's the end of my talk. I'd welcome, welcome any questions. Questions or comments? Uh, that's a good question, and we haven't done it yet. And uh, we, some of our results address the relative role, for example, of, uh, of organic carbon versus uh, carbon black and other types of aerosols, but uh, that could be something that could be looked at. And I, I recognize what you're saying, and that's down the road. Professor No. Well, they're all in Alabama. <laughs> no, I, 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 pardon me? Well, the instruments that we were able to acquire uh, actually used, I think, Bill, isn't this right? One of them, they, they use, uh, they use, I don't think LIDAR, but they, these are droplet measurement technology instruments, called physics instruments. And so there are, you know, over the volume that the aircraft flies, uh, you know, they are remote sensors, but the, the types of measurements that we need, uh, you know, are, are particles on the submicron size. So in terms of ground-based instrumentation, there aren't too many. And LIDARs during hurricane situations don't work too well. But, but I'd like, thank you. Professor Rosenfeld will rescue me.
Oye. And we, we would like to coordinate with your group and other groups if we can, with, especially with the permission of the air, NOAA aircraft people and the HRD people. Uh, I, and thank you, Danny, for mentioning that. The, the work we've done thus far in tracking and identifying aerosols is mainly using a, a Hindcast model, the go-kart model from, from, from NASA. You know, a future, if, if the goes are has improved capabilities in that regard, and I'm not optimistic from what I'm hearing, by the way. Uh, we'd, we'd go that route, as well as additional aircraft measurements, including maybe even unmanned systems. You know, that's perhaps a possibility in, in the future. Uh, other questions, and then I think we'll have to move on. Okay, thanks, Bill.